Hi everyone. So today I'm just going to go through this BCSO deck profile. I just kind of whipped this kind of like last minute before entering the standard tournament. Uh, I didn't feel like playing Bastion, so I just went with a Hex Orb instead. Uh, it's a bit of a weird list, I guess, because uh, I, I've not seen that many profiles for Hex Orb. But this just seemed a little bit different enough to be worth doing deck profile on. So yeah, let's get started. Uh, the score, by the way, was 5-3. So it was it was... It, it was quite short from top 8, but I think I gave up on top 8 anyway because of the first two rounds. I basically just lost straight up the first two games, uh, so it was never going to work out. But I think playing on um, playing on was worth it because I then st um, managed to kind of um, make my score a bit better after that. Anyway, try connect Source as a starter, obviously. Although, you don't have to play this. You could play the other one instead if you want to tilt your opponent. Sometimes people do that, like Bastion players... Like, for example, Solemn Vanguard, uh, he played uh, the this as his starter in the Bastion deck. Just just a way, I guess, you can deceive your opponent to thinking you're playing a different uh, deck. But I'm just going a bit thematic. Um, and besides, maybe it's better if people underestimate you anyway. <laughs> um, for Hex Orb Sorceress, I say it's better that they underestimate you, maybe because everyone expects Bastion. And probably people might know about the tilt anyway. So I've got four Hex Orb Sorceresses. I kind of like this card, although the Persona Ride is a problem because unlike Bastion, when you try to mulligan, you kind of want your Persona Ride, so sometimes you do end up with a worse post-mulligan hand uh, with this deck because of that. Uh, that's kind of like one of the reasons why people, I think, regard Bastion as better than Hexor, but the actual skill is pretty nice because it doesn't rely too much on rearguards. So if things go wrong, you draw too many triggers, you draw too many orders, you draw too many PGs, this deck still functions um, moderately, I guess. That's one thing it's got going for it. And it's fun anyway. Uh, in a format where there's no protect gifts, there's no recurring perfect guards, stacking your deck with triggers is actually more effective now, especially without guard restricts, because there are no guard restricts in this version of you know st uh, stack manipulation. Unlike V-Series, V-Series is quite tiring. You know, stacking your triggers, but then you know your opponent will have a protect gift because they're also playing OTT or they're playing Grand Blue, Nubatama, etc. Um, but then... You've also got the whole thing with the recurring PGs, which have been a stain for Oracle Think Tank back in G era. Like, if you went against Luard, for example, drag save Ezras, just spam that every turn. Oracle Think Tank can never lay a win. Uh, so they are pretty reliant on uh, guard restricts to get around that problem. But in this format, you don't need guard restricts to compete with a stacking deck, which is pretty neat, actually. It's one of the, the good things, I think, uh, about this at the moment. And then we've got Four, Divine Sister Lapisto, very fun card. I love this card. Um, it's just, it's just refreshing to have sort of an aggressive combo that combos with drive checking triggers. It's a bit like Bastion, I guess, because Bastion has the whole drive check a grade three, then restand a rear guard. But this is now a rear guard doing it, so you can use it as support with other decks. So it kind of fits in anything. But obviously, it's better in a stacking based deck. It's more made for Oracle Think Tank or. So, you know, pseudo oracle think tank in the case of hex orb sorceress. More attacks is always good, and if you combine with persona ride, it's even better. Then you've got uh, these two orders. You've got your uh, hour of holy judgment cometh. So this card, it's more like filler. It's this just wasn't anything else to play. There's hardly any cards to choose from in this uh, deck, so I just went for some draw engine cards. But obviously, counter blasting is isn't always the best thing because of Lepisto. I think more often I just discard it for my ride chain. Although there are some other discard worthy cards as well. Then we've got Pentagleam Sorceress. One of the best cards I think in this deck. One for the ride line of course. Um, yeah, this card helps you stack. This this card helps you play even if you can't persona ride. You can also rush early game with it which is nice. It's very nice. Like Definitely definitely um, one of the most aggressive cards. It's also the only grade 2 in the deck. And then we've got the other card in the ride line as well, Tear Square Sorceress. So, I mean, it's not that amazing um, as a rear guard, to be fair, but it's sometimes been handy just to do the field control. Of course, Counter Blast 1 can hurt, so you have to be a bit careful with using it. You have to make sure you're not compromising in your other plays and losing out on your finishers. So this deck, this deck does require using a bit more of a brain than Bastion, to be fair, because of the heavy Counter Blast costs that can get in your way of finishing. Uh, then you've got four Aegis Mare Dragons, perfect guards. Uh, very nice card, I guess. I haven't used the skill that much to preserve hands. 
Um, but it's always nice to ha have that just in case. I think the last ditch sort of situation. Then we've got four Painkiller Angel, one of my favorite cards in the deck. Just that whole refund and draw thing, so you can rush your opponent while still having a hand. The sort of classic Oracle Think Tank, if you guys played uh, the Oracle keyword back in the day, there was a card similar to this called uh, Nazuna. It's an Oracle card, 7k, you know, boost with it, retire it and draw a card in the battle. It's quite nice. So it's sort of a reminder of that, but it has a Soul Blast cost in this case. Then you've got the Counter Charger. You know, this card, you hardly use it, but th there was sadly a game, I think, where I forgot to use a skill and it kind of hurt um, forgetting to do it. But yeah, the idea is that it helps you sort of ease your Counter Blast costing. So just make sure not to sleep on this and make the same mistake I did, because just because you don't use the card enough, like you can sometimes, I guess, because we're so used to activating skills all the time and things being more consistently useful, especially from playing, you know, V, v Premium and Premium, where oftentimes we, we, we're choosing between really good cards, right? But in D Standard, uh, it's very different. It's sort of like earlier Vanguard because you're choosing... You're you're not choosing between like broken card and broken card. You're now choosing between more niche cards than before, uh, in some of these decks. So sometimes you're picking stuff that isn't always going to be used. Especially hex orb sorceress. That's a very good example of, of a deck like that where you're not actually making use of all the cards that you're playing because there's just nothing else that's like so good to choose from. So you you gotta kind of get into the hang of. Um, remembering to use skills and keep an eye out for obscure situations a bit more often then you've got divine sister tartine also helps with stacking it's not bad at all sort of like classic bow sister coco in a way and then four hill triggers i went for like three of the sorceress ones just for the theme i don't have a fourth one um that's that's not that's the only ones i pulled in my six boxes so and then there's the one arshis as well then you've got the uh the witch which looks more like an oracle card well, it looks more like Japanese mythology than it does a witch, but maybe they just kind of merged it all into one, I guess. Um, then you've got more crits, gar uh, Gargoant, I think it was called. Um, the crit more associated with Bastion, so we can get the eight crits in. Then we have filler, sorry, front triggers. This will obviously get replaced with the new ones that gain shield when they come out. I don't really like draw triggers that much just because they have inherently low shield. That being said, draws do have their advantages, so it is to each their own, really. Like, draws can help you find key pieces, it can help you find Persona Ride. But then if you're also someone who just wants to have an extra card to use with Hex Orb, or if you want to have solid shield value that's not relying on trigger sacking, but just hard drawing into 15k shields rather than hard drawing into disappointing 5k draw triggers, then that's an advantage of front triggers. And then uh, the best bit is the uh, Admiral Tanoa. I had a lot of fun with this. There was one game I had where uh, my opponent was on grade 2 and I pretty much obliterated his hand um, with this card. So, yeah, you can still get fast wins in this game, uh, <laughs> as usual. Um, so I just, I got this and I think I got like 6 drive checks in that turn at least or something like that. Like that. Um, and it was with the Pistol as well, which made it a bit more brutal. The Pistol is the grade 2 that restands, by the way. So yeah, all in all, that's basically my Hex Orb Sorceress profile, so I'm, I'm not going to dismantle this, turn to a Bastion deck and go play at my locals in a bit. Uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.